We're going to answer some questions about a rational function in this example. So some of these questions are fairly straightforward, such as the y-intercept. Y-intercepts always occur when x equals 0. So in this case, what we can do is replace each one of the x's, evaluate this function as 0. So 3 times 0 squared minus 16 times 0 plus 16 over 2 times 0 squared plus 9 times 0 minus 5. Now this is going to work out to be 0 squared. 0 times 3 is 0. Minus 16 times 0 is 0. Plus 16, we're going to get to positive 16. And then for our denominator, 0 plus 0 minus 5 makes negative 5. So as an ordered pair, this is going to look like 0 comma 16 over negative 5. Now these other questions rely more so, especially x-intercepts and vertical asymptotes, on our ability to factor. So we want to factor the numerator, we want to factor the denominator. So to do so, what I'm going to do is utilize the AC method. For our numerator, I'm going to calculate a times c, which will be 3 times 16, which works out to be 48. And then I'm going to list out all the different ways to factor 48. 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 3 times 16, 4 times 12, and finally 6 times 8. Okay, from here we want to uh, use the sign of that constant. It's a plus sign, so we want to find the pair that adds together to make the middle number, the 16. Alright, the pair 4 and 12 add together to make the 16, so I'm going to use that. All right, um, next, with the AC method, I'm going to bring the first term down. I'm just doing my work off to the side. I'm going to rewrite that middle term, the negative 16x, strategically using 4x and 12x as my coefficients. And then the plus 16 comes down as our constant. Now these middle terms, the 4x and the 12x, I'm strategically splitting apart my negative 16x. So if I combine these back together, it has to combined back together to make negative 16. So in this case, I'm going to make both of these negative. From here, we now have four terms. So when you're thinking about four terms in factoring, you want to think factor by grouping. So we'll group the first two terms together. Say, what do they have in common? In this case, it's going to be an x. If I factor out an x from each of those first two terms, we're going to get 3x minus 4 inside a set of parentheses. And now for factor by grouping to work, What's in that first set of parentheses has to be the exact same thing as what's in the second set of parentheses. So you're basically doing the same thing with that second pair of terms, the negative 12x plus 16, and saying, what do they have in common? But sometimes it's handy to put what's in the parentheses first and then kind of work backwards. So now I think, well, they definitely have, let me think, they have a 4 in common, but we're going to have to make it a negative 4 so that when I redistribute, negative 4 times 3x makes negative 12x, and negative 4 times negative 4 makes positive 16. From here, to finish up our factoring, what's in front of the parentheses goes in one set, and what's inside the parentheses is a common factor now, it goes in the other set of parentheses. Okay, so now we have rewritten our numerator in factored form. So I'm going to go ahead and write that x minus 4 times 3x minus 4. Alright, now we want to factor our denominator. To factor the denominator, I'm going to go through the same steps, just off to the side. I'm going to calculate a times c, so for our denominator that's 2 times 5, and I'm kind of ignoring 2 times 5, I'm ignoring the negative out in front because that tells us something different in a second. 2 times 5 will make 10. All the different ways to factor 10 are 1 and 10, and 2 and 5. This time it's a negative constant, so we're looking for the pair that subtracts to make 9. Well, we can use 10 minus 1 makes 9. That helps us split up the middle term. So now our, bring down the first term, rewrite the middle term as 1x, and 10x, bring down the minus 5 at the end. Okay, from here we want to make sure that those middle terms, if we combine those like terms back together, they make a positive 9. So in our case, I think we have to go positive 10 and negative 1. At this point, we have four terms. Think factor by grouping, where you group the first two terms together and say, what do they have in common? In this case, it's just an x. 
So if I factor out an x from those first two terms, we're left with 2x minus 1. I can kind of jump over here and say, well, this has to end up being 2x minus 1 also in that second set of parentheses. Those second pair of terms, then 10x minus 5, now has a 5 in common. And we're going to make it a positive 5. So if positive 5 times 2x makes positive 10x, positive 5 times negative 1 makes negative 5 if we were to redistribute. Okay, from here, what's out in front of the parentheses goes in one set. What's inside the parentheses goes in the other set. So the denominator is going to look like x plus 5, 2x minus 1. Now why we want to rewrite f of x in factored form is because our x-intercepts are going to be whenever the entire function is equal to 0. Well, with a fraction, if the numerator is equal to 0, 0 divided by some other number always equals 0. So really, we just care about when does factor by factor, what would I need to plug into x for this first factor to make that factor and it alone to equal 0. So if I put in a positive 4 here, 4 minus 4 would make this factor equal 0, and since it's multiplied by the rest of the numerator, the whole numerator would be 0, so the whole thing would in, end up equaling 0. So we had x equals positive 4, and then for our other factor, the 3x minus 4, it may be handy to set that equal to 0 and figure out when is that going to equal 0. We can solve this down by adding 4 to both sides and then dividing both sides by 3. So we get x equals 4 thirds. Now as ordered pairs, these are going to look like x value of 4, and that made the whole function equal 0, or have an output of 0. 4 thirds was our second x value. It's going to have an output of 0 as well. So that's what they look like as ordered pairs. Next up, we want to find vertical asymptotes. So with vertical asymptotes, we care about when does the denominator equal 0. And because there aren't any common factors between numerator and denominator, we don't get any removable discontinuities or holes in our graph. So factor by factor, we say, what do I need to plug into this x to make this factor equal 0? Or we could set it equal to 0 if we wanted to and solve down. But we're going to get an x value of negative 5. On the other one, we could say 2x minus 1. When does that equal 0? If it's difficult to see just by doing it mentally in our head, do a little bit of solving down, and we get x equals positive 2x equals positive 1. Divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 1 half. At each one of these values, these are vertical asymptotes. These are equations of vertical lines, so we don't make them into ordered pairs. Finally, our horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes are dictated by the degrees of the numerator and denominator. That's how we're learning it this semester. So the degree of the numerator, since it's in descending order, is 2. The degree of the denominator, the highest power on x here, is 2. So the rule says that when they have the exact same degree, the horizontal asymptote is going to be the ratio of leading coefficients. pardon my spelling, and it's going to be y equals the ratio of leading coefficients. So what we mean by that is y is going to equal whatever the leading coefficient of the numerator is over the leading coefficient of the denominator. So in our case, we're looking at these numbers right in front, and we can say y equals 3 over 2 is going to be the equation of our horizontal asymptote. That's what value uh, our graph is going to get close to at the ends, out towards infinity and out towards negative infinity. All right, hope this helps out. Good luck with the rational functions.